Welcome to an overview of electronics, fabrication, and assembly. This is presented to you as part of the Jumpstart Program 2020 at SMTA International. This is intended for two particular groups, the young professionals who are just starting out in our industry and the seasoned professionals who have been around for a long time and may know one part of the process more than the other part and to give them a broader operational understanding of all of the different processes involved. My name is Gary Tunnell. I have the pleasure to speak to you today as the Chairman of the Electronic Alliance and Ambassador of the SMTA and the Dallas Chapter President of the SMTA. I've been an active member of the association for 27 years and find it to be a very valuable networking opportunity and exchange of knowledge. You meet some of the most wonderful people in the world in our industry. I encourage you to continue your participation in the organization. Over the years, electronics have changed tremendously in all aspects. I'm putting together here for you an example in 1965. Cars like the Mustang below had very limited electronics, like radio. Okay, Today, in 2020, you have all different aspects. A lot of the electronic, a lot of the functionality of the car is now embedded in the electronics. Today, I'm going to go through a little bit about how these electronics are manufactured, fabricated, assembled, and tested before they go into your final assemblies. Today we're going to talk about a number of different things. We're going to talk about PCBs, printed circuit board fabrications. We're going to talk about packaging and parts, what they look like. We're going to talk about circuit card assemblies, sometimes called PCBAs. A little bit about functional flying probe and in-circuit test. And a little bit about box build and system integration. First of all, let's look at fabrication. The fabrication of the PCBs are the bedrock of the circuit board. Those are all of the interconnects that's done on the CAD system prior to it going to fabrication. What you'll see here is how the interco interconnections are made from one layer to the other layer, anywhere from one, two, four, six, eight, or more layers in a board. And the PCB holds the components in place, allows them to be soldered, and allows them to interconnect the way that the electrical engineer has specified. I'll walk you through the process here today. Let's start off by seeing how the PCBs are fabricated. We start off with a thin layer of insulating material called a dielectric. We, com we place copper clad materials on the top and bottom, creating an inner layer, covering with photoresist to create the circuit structures. We cover the conductor pattern using a negative process. Then we develop the exposed material, removing the copper not covered by the photoresist. Then we remo removing the photolaminate used as the etching mask. laying the surface material, processing individual materials under pressure and temperature, drilling of holes through the substrate in the base materials, initial metallization of the entire circuit board including inside of the bore holes with wafer thin conductive copper layers covering the photoresist to create the circuit substructures, applying and exposing the film, developing the exposed material, reinforcing the circuit structures with their final thickness of copper, covering a thin layer as an etching mask, removing the photoresist. removing the copper not covered by the metal resist, typically tin, removing the metal resist, applying photosensitive solder stop layer, applying and exposing the film again, developing the material, applying a solderable surface such as chemical nickel gold, covering the solder mask layers, labeling with screen printing to apply part numbers or identifying material, milling the end profile all the way around the circuit board. Let's rotate the board here so you can see a full 360 degree view.
Now let's take a look at some photos and videos of a real uh, PCB fabrication with the copper clad materials that I originally talked to. Over here you see the material cutting. The radius of the corner is needed to avoid the scratches during the production. This is the inner layer coating. The wet film process. This is a requirement for a clean room, usually a 10K clean room. Material is automatically handled, delivered from one machine to another. Cleanliness is extremely important. Automatic exposure machines to transfer the pattern from the film onto the inner layers or the, the core materials. The LDI machine, laser direct imaging system with high resolution precision to one and a half mil lines and spaces. CCD automatic exposure machine to expose the film on the outer layers and the uh, layer core materials. Developing, etching, and stripping to etch the unnecessary copper and leave the pattern as needed. Inner layer or AOI automated optical inspections transfer the image of the machine with the optical reflections of the material. The inspector then looks for opens and shorts on the circuits layer by layer. Cutting of the prepreg material to the optimal size according to the inner core material specifications. Uh, riveting the inner core material to the outside to avoid misregistrations. Automatic handling of the materials, very, very important. This is a layup of a material from one to another, building up to all the layers in the board. Then comes pressing the boards in high temperatures on, and uh, vacuum materials. You press the layers of the boards in uh, individual layers to create a total multi-layer circuit board. Then this is uh, cutting the etch. Uh, you cut the outlines of the board and etch in the processes. Here you look at some of the inner drilling machines. These are mechanical drilling machines, very small diameters. You see many boards at one time. All the boards are in panel form. This is another way of, way of cutting uh, the holes using a laser drilling machine. This is uh, going the, putting the plated through holes, the plating in the copper layers as it goes from one bath to the other. Panel plating. And this is a machine with vertical copper plating systems. Better copper plating performance can uh, be uh, uh, achieved using this mechanism. This is dry film imaging machines, no human contact at all. So parts coming out of the machine in panel form. Panels are removed with gloves. Handling. Outer layer etching. This is a solder mask. It's coating of all the circuits of the copper with a solder mask ink. After the photo polymerization of the developing of the uh, solder mask ink, it remains uh, in the holes. Uh, this is a screen printing I talked about earlier, identifying the part numbers and symbolization that is needed. Immersion gold, uh, plating of the CAD materials with high performance materials and uh, enabling the solderability. as I talked about the routing of the boards to remove the uh, uh, PCBs from the panelized assemblies. Customized material outlines using uh, CNC uh, router machines. All automated in this example. This electrical test to inspect the opens and shorts of the finished PCBs. Make sure you got the continuity. Another version of that machine in a vertical. 
uh, flying probes on the top side and the bottom side. The appearance is uh, very important on the circuit boards. This is what would be called a, a final inspection. Automatic appearance of the inspection machine uh, compared to the human visual inspection. Automated optical inspection. Let's talk about a different aspect of uh, printed circuit board fabrication, which is kind of new and exciting. If, uh, uh, as we see the technology's advances, this is a little brief thing on uh, 3D printing of circuit board fabrications. It allows a lot of different aspects in the areas of sensors, magnets, printed circuit boards, antennas, and, and such. I'll show you a little, little overview here of how how um, machines are made now to do all of the processes I talked about before, only all in, in one step. Here you'll see a, a video of a machine as the operator wa walks up and uh, you see the material going back and forth. You see images of each one of the layers. This is the actual material, conductive material, dielectric material, inkjet print heads, deposits the conductive and dielectric uh, inks, builds up the inner layer circuit by passing through one after another, back and forth, back and forth, very time consuming, but much faster than the process that I showed you before as far as doing a single board. It prints the bottom side of the solder mask and pad, prints the inner inner layers, uh, prints and cures the dielectrics, and you keep repeating it as it builds up and builds up from, from one area to another area. And then it's ready for component placement and soldering as you might see in this illustration over here. So limited applications, but for the areas that it is uh, appropriate, it uh, is very functional. Let's talk now about component packaging, the electronics that goes into the devices that then gets assembled onto the circuit board. Here you see a, a leaded uh, component. Uh, if you look in the upper right hand corner, you'll actually see uh, another component on the fingernail over here. Over the years, electronic circuit boards have changed a heck of a lot. Uh, there's hundreds of interconnects in the version of the upper left hand corner in the 1960s with through hole components, very wide edges. In the 70s, early 80s, this is also through hole components and there's thousands of interconnects here. The part on the right, more current technology, utilizes surface mount through hole, top side, bottom side, with tens of thousands of interconnects on circuit boards in the same space. Let's talk a little bit about component packaging. On the right hand side we have some through hole parts which we insert into the circuit board, either radials, dips, axials. You can see uh, they're through hole because the leads come, come down the board go into the holes. On the left hand side you'll see various different surface mount components, uh, chip components, plastic leaded components, quad components, SOICs and you can see it utilizes the top side assembly and you can also put parts on the bottom side of, of uh, the circuit board making it uh, two-sided assemblies. Now let's talk a little bit about component packaging. Again here's some of the through hole parts on, on the bottom. You're looking at some uh, cans, some devices, some axials, radials, uh, plastic dual in, inline uh, packages. Looking here at some ceramic parts looking here at uh, plastic parts. Uh, over here I've got uh, index of some acronyms used in it for uh, quad flat packs, uh, single outline J leads. You can see some of the pictures of them up here. These are called chip components, resistors, components, resistors, capacitors, and so forth. Um, uh, quad flat packs. On the match head over here, you see a progression of some of these components all the way down to an 010005. I'll share with you some of the sizes a little bit, a little bit later, but you can, you can see how, how the progression has been made over the years. I'm going to show you some examples. This is some salt that's on uh, a plate here with a, with a pen. There's some components right over here. 
I've got some some sizes listed over here and various different packages 01005s but you can see there's actually smaller parts over here going to uh, uh, 0 0.25 uh, millimeter and if we look at this you'll see some salt and you'll see some little specks over here looks like pepper let's kind of zoom in a little bit more and now you see this uh, 08004 components which is the 0.25 by 125 millimeter uh, parts in here very very small Let's look at some automated tape and reel, uh, how components now are put onto the reels to present into the SMT process. So let's take a little, little look at how the parts are actually put into the packaging. We uh, contact the, the strip and you can see there's a, a bowl feeder over here where the raw materials come in, some, uh, some packages over here going around in here. It uh, sorts it with the correct size uh, pointing up and you can see the uh, pick and place machine over here which picks the parts off of the bowl and then puts them into the uh, component packaging and, uh, tape pieces and it's sorting on the uh, on the pick and place machine as it moves around now let's look at loading into each one of the pockets on another another view of the machine as you see it in the in the background in the in the foreground picking up the parts uh, placing them into the, uh, the uh, sections of the of the tape. Now we're looking at uh, the material that places uh, over the top, this great uh, clear material, putting it into uh, onto the tape and reel. Now we'll move into the circuit board assemblies. Uh, there's all different sh sizes and shapes and all different applications and infinite amount. But looking at the top row, we see some, some RF, uh, we see uh, uh, back planes, uh, middle row, we see some, some power devices, some uh, flexible uh, circuit boards, some uh, small circuit boards, uh, various different uh, LEDs, looking at the size, and uh, power devices, uh, power supplies, so all different functionalities on circuit boards. So let's talk about how an assembled board uh, moves down the line. Now, once the line is, is set up and profiled, the components move from left to the right as the line that you're looking at over here, moving into printing, uh, paste inspection, placing the components, putting the components uh, into an oven, uh, rapid uh, heating the parts up, and then cooling cooling them, them down. I'll talk about that. Then we move into an automated optical inspection machine. This is a view of an example of one of the, the highly automated assembly shops, assembly lines. We put all the circuit boards into the panel over here, uh, load up several hundred circuit boards starting in through the, through the line. Coming out of that machine moves on to conveyorized assembly as it moves from one machine to another. These rails can adjust 4 inches to 18 inches uh, or more to accommodate the, uh, the circuit boards. If you notice, you all these boards are square or uh, rectangular. If you happen to have a circuit board, the, uh, the boards are placed uh, with rails on the side so that they can go down the line and then remove from the rails later down the line. So we're going to start off by talking about screen printing. It's probably the most important single step. If, uh, if you don't get this one right, uh, it's not going to fix itself uh, down the line without being uh, touched up. So a very important process. I'll talk about uh, screen printing as we move along here with the stencils, the solder paste, and the squeegees. The uh, squeegee moves across the circuit board, uh, putting paste uh, through the holes. So there's holes in the stencil to align with the solder that you'll see on every one of the pads. You want solder on every one of the exposed pads, but not on the interconnects between the two pads. Here's an example of uh, four to five thousandths thick with uh, nano coating. You see there's round apertures and square apertures. The hole geometry is, is very important here with aspect ratios of the width versus the height to achieve the proper amount of solder in every one of the pads. Now let's take a look at the actual screen printing in, in process So as we move up with the camera over here. See the board is in there, the uh, uh, top of the board is uh, aligned to the uh, stencil with an inspection machine. Look up at the top, you see the squeegee pushing the solder paste down into all of the holes uh, on the top of the circuit board, putting the paste 
in into into the holes and onto the board snaps the uh, the solder uh, up off of the board uh, stops the stencil off the top of the board and moves it down into the next machine let's talk about part preparation for uh, pick and place of the surface mount components you saw the uh, the tape and reel earlier uh, in the upper left hand corner you see the parts on reels you see the parts in matrix trays you see parts in, in tubes so this is tape and reel the, the reels are then placed onto feeders the feeders are then placed on the carts and then the carts are then loaded onto the pick and place machines machines are multitasking but uh, you see an example here of what's called a chip shooter machine which can place small components very very quickly based on speed and for the larger components that lead a little bit more accuracy a little bit more inspection they're called fine pitch placement machines let's watch a video over here of a of a uh, chip shooter machine as a component uh, as a board moves into the uh, machine typically it's uh, scanned in you see in the lower left hand corner also a view of uh, the bottom side of the machine as the pick and place heads are moving on the top this particular machine has got uh, two moving heads one in the front and one in the back you see the feeders in the front of the screen. You see the head, the two heads moving back and forth on the, on the rotary placement machines. The uh, feeder carts are over here in the front and over here in the back of the machine, placing parts onto the top side of the circuit board. They'll go through, th through this entire line twice, one for the top side, look around, and then they'll do the, uh, the back side. It's a little bit closer view over here I've got for you where you can kind of see uh, how the rotary head is picking the, the parts up off of the, the tape feeders and then putting them down onto the onto the circuit boards. Now an even closer view where you can see the backup head and the front heads. Very close view where you can see it actually picking up off of the feeders moving very very quickly. You can see the parts moving through there placing some LEDs in this case onto the uh, onto the circuit board. Moving down to the to the next machine, so the next machine in this case will be a a fine pitch uh, placement machine. You see, it's got some uh, boxes on the top. You have some uh, matrix trays in here. Also has some tape and reel feeders on the back and the front for some of the larger larger components. And a very flexible uh, address system with uh, the matrix trays, which hold the very very large parts. And you'll see in here that the uh, it's a little bit slower than the the uh, chip shooters, but it's looking at every part, making sure the orientation is correct, adjusting it, uh, looking down at the board to see where it's supposed to place it, uh, local fiducials, and then places it in exactly the right orientation. Now we're going to talk a little bit about reflow. So you can see there's anywhere from from six to eight different zones in a reflow ovens. You can heat, heat them from the top and, uh, and the bottom at, at the same time. Material comes in in a lower right hand corner like this. The solder paste is on each one of the pads. The boards are moved from left to right with a particular heat zone. It ramps up, um, uh, activates all of the fluxes, stays liquidous for a designated period of time, and then goes through some cooling zones. So let's look at some examples of some reflow soldering over here. You see this is a, an image as it goes through an oven. Uh, this part of the board heats up first as the board moves through the oven in this in this direction. You, you can see the solder paste over here. You see the shininess, you see the fluxes activating in these pictures. As it heats up, you'll see the parts come down and they actually self-center. So you watch the different parts in here, like in this. See that self-centering going on right there? If you look at the, the right in here, the fluxes are activated. Solder uh, reflows, pulls the parts in here. 
and the board continues to uh, uh, reflow for a number of seconds. Now we're going to look at some self-centering of some components. This particular component is placed way off, but you can see as it moves into it, the uh, surface tension of the solder uh, will pull apart uh, to center on here. It doesn't forgive everything, but you see it is relatively forgiving on exact placements on here, moving into a, a, good, a good solder joint. Ball grid array soldering. Solder paste is put on the board. The components have solder balls and as it's reflowed the balls uh, start uh, softening solder paste the balls collapse uh, giving you a, a good a good joint without any shorts between one ball uh, and another the same can be said for some through hole parts typically they're placed by hand but they can be placed uh, in machine in some occasions but right now in today's world most of these are placed by hand you can either uh, run it through a hand soldering operation or a wave soldering operation. This particular one is uh, intrusive reflow where the part is placed on prior to reflow and it's reflowed along with the uh, surface mount parts. But you can see the solder paste is on the top, on the bottom. Parts are in here, put all the way through the board, i.e. through hole, and run through the reflow. Here's another way of soldering those through hole components. Um, selective solder machines, either in, uh, in uh, tin lead or Rojas materials. I'll show you a video here shortly, which looks at this head. You'll see the circuit board comes in. The solder uh, fountain is below the circuit board. Uh, it then comes up with a molten fountain, touches the pins, sticking through the bottom of the board. And let's go ahead and look at the, the video of this uh, right now. This is looking up uh, onto the circuit board from the bottom of the machine. As you see, the fountain is turned on, turned off as it moved in. Some pads are uh, tin, so we don't have any exposed gold. This is very interesting, moving it uh, back and forth at a certain time and temperature to solder all the pins in this particular array. Take a very long time to hand solder all of these uh, solder pins. This is called selective solder uh, through hole components onto the circuit board. You can see some surface mount components placed here on the bottom side of the board and you note those parts are not re-soldered during this process. Okay, now let's talk about automated optical inspection. You can do this uh, automated using a machine. Uh, you can do it strictly with uh, visual. It's kind of a combination. AOI machines look at the entire circuit board based on the data and known good boards. Uh, flag things to the uh, inspector, and the inspector makes the final decision whether that particular um, find is a, a legitimate defect or if it is not a defect. So the machine doesn't make the decisions. The, the inspector makes the decisions based on the uh, automated presentation. I'll show you a video here as the operator loads the part uh, into the circuit, into the machine. It uh, takes pictures uh, all the way down the line. You can see the top and the bottom of the machine over here with the LED lights taking multiple um, component sections at a time and then processing the visual images to make sure that all the components are in the right place, proper solder joints, proper orientations, uh, parts are not uh, uh, tombstoned. And you can see this, the same board goes back in again. This time it's looking at the bottom side of the circuit board. It'll flag anything that looks unusual and it'll mark it as a fail then the operator will go in and look at it closer and make the final determination of whether it is a real defect or not. And then after the boards are assembled and inspected, the boards then are cut out of the frame to singulate the particular PCBs. These are assembled boards, double-sided boards. You can see this is an ADA panel, so we're moving from ADA panels in an assembly array 
to the single circuit board. Could be round, could be square, could be any shape. You have uh, routers and you have deep analyzers, which is like a pizza cutting blade, if you will, to singulate and break the boards free from the assembly panel. Now let's talk about flying probe testing specifically. Flying probe is just like a simulates basically a technician with uh, probes and an ohmmeter or DVOM but it uses many many probes on the top side and the bottom side at the same time as you can see touching the bottom of the board top of the board this is uh, the flying probe this is a bed of nails tester that I'll show you in just a minute but let's take a look at the flying probe over here right now as it moves moves in the board is slid into into the view I'll show the outside of the machine over here so you can see there's probes moving at the top of the board and probes moving at the bottom of the board as it moves moves along. Close-up view, you see a number of heads at the top, number of heads at the bottom as they touch each individual. This is really just testing the nets to make sure that one net is not shorted uh, to another net. Checking power, ground, and all the single traces to make uh, measuring the uh, the ohms at each one very uh, precise movements obviously you don't want to do this too much because you're actually making contact with every one of the pads this is very good for small volumes uh, it takes a lot longer to run these tests than uh, at a nails tester but it's a lot less expensive so if you have a lot of boards to do and you want to do this continuity test uh, and you can make it up in a custom fixture pretty expensive fifteen twenty twenty five thousand dollars possibly but it may change test time from twenty minutes down to a number of seconds twenty thirty seconds so let's look at the uh, the in circuit test bed of nails testers you can see this where you open up the the fixture it's got pins on the top and the bottom you load the circuit board into the fixture close it all of the bed of nails, all of the nails are contacting the board at the same time as you see in this inter, uh, illustration. Uh, the circuit board has got pins that comes down from the bottom over to the front. You lift up the cover, slide the circuit board in, it then comes down, makes contact on the bottom. The top cover comes down. If there's any pins on the top, contacts the top pins and the bottoms. This is all these pins are directly aligned with the circuit board and it goes down to a, a larger spread over here into the the actual tester. Custom functional electrical test uh, a wide variety of tests. These are all customs so basically you want to make sure the board is functioning uh, not just uh, continuity wise uh, for manufacturing defects but this board actually doing what it is supposed to be doing. So you make up the test and it comes out and says, is it tested good or bad? So let's talk about x-rays a little bit. Two-dimensional x-ray, or 2D x-rays and, and 3D x-rays here. So I'll show you a little bit of, uh, of both of those here as we look at the, the various videos. So this is an example of a sheen. Obviously with x-rays, got to be all enclosed. Uh, they've come a long way in the past few years for doing uh, inspections. This is really needed for devices that you cannot inspect using the AOI machine. It's got no visual path to inspect. All the solder joints are underneath the parts. So let's take a look at how this is done. It's got a large door that provides easy access to the uh, inspection area. It's got a very high accuracy component rotator. Uh, the controls well illustrated. Turning X-ray on, everybody knows that it's on. The operator is safe on the outside. Very fast. You can then go back and program for specific parts to manually look at components using the joystick interactive control with the real-time inspections, rotating the parts in multiple different degrees, rotating the head for multiple different angles. You can see all the bond wires inside of the chips. All of the via holes, BGA voids are much more visible. It moves around to various different, various different angles. It's 
Let's talk about reworking the BGAs if the inspection machine finds a, a BGA that is uh, not correct, opens or shorts, you might have to remove that component or reflow that component. Let's look at desoldering to start with. The board is placed on a on a device pad and the board is gradually heated up. As the board is uh, hot on the bottom and then the nozzle is blowing hot nitrogen onto the component through this piece here. You can look at the solder balls right over here. At some point you see the solder balls going liquidous. The solder balls turn liquidous. The component uh, is picked up using a vacuum stylus. And then you just have the balls exposed over there. You want to take the old solder off of the board so you have to now run the whole process again without the component on. Now you have a hot stylus when all the boards, when all the balls are reflowed, you then use the solder sucker and suck all the solder up off of the off of the pads. The new component will have the uh, the solder on it. So let's talk, talk about soldering of the component. First, we have to apply the flux onto the the solder balls. So pick up the part, dip it in the flux, pick it up out of the flux and place it down back onto the circuit board. Automatic component placement. You do an alignment and you place the component on the board. The board is preheated from below. Hot nitrogen blows down from the top. When the component liquefies, settles down, ball collapse, you now have a, a soldered circuit joint on the ball grid arrays. Let's move into conformal coating can spray it, inspect it, cure it. You can see this pre-programmed nozzle moving back and forth on all of the uh, material. Obviously moisture and electronics don't get, to, don't get along very well so it's very important in outside environments where it's subject to moisture that you protect the components and the interconnects without uh, coating the, the com connectors. All different applications of conformal coating over very large components, very small components. It's going through all of the leads uh, along these LEDs. And we're going to do uh, sp spot curing and AOI. Putting the uh, conformal coating material down, inspections, let's talk about encapsulations of some of the components, very very thick uh, material over on top of the components. We're going to talk about putting down some solder paste. Thermal interface of materials. As the parts get hot, you want to have some type of interface in there to conduct the heat from the circuit board onto the, uh, the plate down below. Sometimes you want to do some gasketing and sealing. Some cool uh, machines here to do this, but basically XYZ machines with uh, material. Let's talk about component potting. You've got coils, all kinds of interconnect, probably water meters, things like that where you um, uh, in very uh, wet environments you want to coat the whole thing very thick coating component potting 
and here's some UV uh, spot cures. Putting conformal coating down and then hitting it with a UV light to uh, cure it instantly. Some adhesives to hold some of the large parts down so they don't uh, shake off of the, of the board and doing a UV coating, UV curing. While applying the proper amount of torque onto the uh, onto the screws that lock the circuit boards onto the onto the heat exchanger. Very short segment here on box build and system integration. Uh, box build is just a, a term that implies taking the circuit board, putting it into what a, a final subassembly might look like. Short little video about a, a typical. Uh, box build operation where you may take some plastics or some materials, some connectors, plugging them in into some various sub-assemblies, uh, very labor-intensive, uh, with some hand tools, uh, connectors, cable, cables, screws. Um, Now let's look at system integration just for a minute here. This particular piece is uh, robotic. Robotic assembly. We hope this overview into electronics fabrication and assembly was a help to you and that you saw something that you didn't see before or you learned something you didn't know. If you have any questions or you wish to know more about a specific portion of any of these processes in this video presentation, just let us know. The SMTA is an association to help you to advance your knowledge of electronics manufacturing and assembly. Thank you for your time in viewing this video.